Uh, goblins, I was asleep. It's very late, early something right now. And I was having some great sleep sleeps. And then a friend of mine woke me up. I'm typically not the happiest waker upper. I was told, hey, you're gonna, you're gonna want to see this. And I was like, all right. So I, I rolled out of bed, hung up my little phone and looked at what just dropped for the wheel of time. I have not had time to process this. But we're getting an Age of Legends movie! Slightly more awake now and I've noticed it's actually a trilogy. A planned three movies. They're just working on the script for the first Age of Legends movie. Okay, so I need to break this down like I'm talking to people who aren't necessarily Wheel of Time fans and then we'll get into it. So it seems that we are getting a movie focusing on spoilers for not plot but world building things for Wheel of Time. The Wheel of Time used to be sci-fi. Essentially there was a utopian sci-fi level technology fueled by magic Eden, like just paradise, that was ruined by calamity. What we've been told about this project titled Age of Legends is... The the initial picture will be set several millennia before the time of the books in a period known as the Age of Legends, a futuristic utopia powered by a magical force shared by men and women known as the One Power. When an unspeakable evil is unleashed upon the world, civilizations descend into chaos and war blankets the globe. When men using the One Power become insane and destroy much of the planet, a small band of women unite under the White Tower and and our humanity's last hope of survival. Okay, lot to think about. I, uh, first of all, okay, I need, suit up! This is big news, big boy time. Obviously there's a big part of me that's just going, uh, but I need to be rational and think. We know very little so far, except for a man named Zack Steins is involved, and he has some credentials. He has worked on Thor, X-Men First Class, in French, all things I enjoy, and he's helming the writing this project. He's also made a statement that he's been a fan of The Wheel of Time for quite some time, and he specifically enjoyed Robert Jordan's world building. You know how I feel about Hollywood statements. Maybe I believe them, maybe I don't. I want to think these are genuine. He seems pretty nerdy like us. Here, okay, here, here's the weird part. Amazon seems to be not involved. So from what I've heard, they own the rights to the main timeline of the series. And then we have other things going on. If I had to guess, those who are in charge of Robert Jordan's IP have begun to realize that with this additional tension from the show, it's a good time to work with what you got. That's not a bad thing. It's perfectly fine with the owners of IPs to do what needs to be done to, of course, make money off the IPs they own. I would prefer to see it under one cohesive banner and vision. There's no word to indicate whether this will be animated or anything along the lines, except for it's just a movie. Heck, it could be on Netflix for all I know. One studio has been confirmed to be involved and that is Radar. They've been involved in projects from Jumanji to Last Samurai. So there's experienced names floating around this script that's apparently being worked on with a guy who has some credentials to his name. There's a part to me that wants to be really excited for a few reasons. Obviously, Wheel of Time, Age of Legends. I don't think we've ever seen an adaptation of a story in a setting like this ever. Think about it. It's the calamity, the fall of an Eden through not only a sci-fi, but also fantastical lens with the magic fueling the technology. It's Oh my god, it could be so cool! But I have to tamper. I gotta reel in expectations and wait for more information. Let's just go ahead and continue into the fantasy news. I oh. Oh, we're, we're getting an extra heap of fantasy news, it seems. Oh, I gotta get it out. I can't hold it in. Oh, oh. that wasn't fantasy news. It was a human head. Let's get into the fantasy news. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a subtle, well-crafted fade of fantasy news to walk on through. I'm gonna get you there. And of course, we're gonna start off with the gargantuan drops from the Witcher franchise, starting with the season two trailer. And I don't wanna sound egotistical, but I told you so. This trailer strikes me as far more polished and 
finalized than anything we got from season one in any promotional material or in the final release. So as I've been saying over the last like year, I think they're gonna be putting a lot more effort into season two. And now that they don't have that hurdle of all the confusing time jumping for people who are not familiar with the franchise, this could be one heck of a season of television. I'm hoping it comes together a bit more polished than what we got before. Not that I hated season one, it just didn't strike me as clear and effort in post-production high enough for me personally to absolutely love it. And I had a lot of people telling me, Daniel, why did you do that Witcher season one explain thing? It's too, it's obvious. People don't need that. Well, the views and comments on that video disagree. A lot of people seemed confused by that season of television and I don't know. I think I got a good feeling about season two. I think it's going to be a step up. It will be premiering December 17th this year on Netflix or as I like to call it, Neflix. But that's not the only Witcher drop we got. They also released a little itty bitty trailer for their upcoming The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf, an animated addendum, I could say, to their current Witcher release. And it's got me excited for the future of the Witcher franchise. It's one that already has had tremendous critical. It's one that's already had tremendous critical acclaim in books and games. I'm hoping the show can reach those highs one day soon. And seeing this double down approach gives me some faith that this will either be a franchise I get to speak on for years as they bring us high quality content as fans or it can crash and burn and then I can do some hindsight content on what exactly went wrong either way win for me I'm good either way that's I would prefer the former I want it to do well but both are an option but Finally, I will fold it back on into the literature medium while still speaking on the Witcher franchise when I let you know that we are getting an illustrated edition of The Last Wish coming to us this December, published by Orbit Books. And yep, I'll be getting and reviewing that here on the channel for you. Get excited, I'm gonna be bringing that to your faces. Speaking of adaptations of iconic fantasy franchises though, we have another reinterpretation, imagining, performance, bringing the Lord of the Rings franchise to your ear holes later this year. That's right, Andy Serkis has sat down and recorded audiobooks for each of the Lord of the Rings stories and Wow, I really cannot wait to listen to these stories once again through his voice. Andy Serkis is an amazingly talented actor and voice actor, and hearing him, the man who played Gollum, bring us the sentences, prose, lines, songs, chimes, whimsy and wonder of Middle Earth is going to be absolutely wonderful. It will be released for streaming September 16th, and if you're into the CDs, those will be released in October. Are they still doing CD releases, really? And yeah, I know, we got another Wheel of Time drop. I'm gonna get to it right after a word from today's sponsor. The internet is a dangerous place. Would you not like a condom while using it? Well, good news. I'm here to tell you about NordVPN, the internet's number one condom. As Trojan is to genitals, NordVPN is to the internet world. Here you can have double encryption, travel anywhere virtually. Yeah, that's right. So when you see the little things, it's like, oh, this is available in your country. <laughs> you can lie and get there. How do you think I watched His Dark Materials for free? I just said I was from the UK and lied about having a TV thing. That's true, you can do that. So let's say, oh, the Wheel of Time show gets released in the country first, that's not yours. <laughs> not your problem, boom, you're in that country. You also can even get things like lower airfare by just changing your location. It's amazing what a VPN can offer you, plus the security all on your mobile device and desktop thingy-majig. So if you're interested in NordVPN and want to traverse the internet with a thick latex layer that you can teleport about, I recommend you check on out NordVPN today using the link in the description for a big old discount, a two-year plan, and a special gift of some kind. Just go ahead and click that right down there and you're good to go. Bye! Okay, so there's been a lot of chitter chatter among the Wheel of Time circles. When is the trailer gonna come on out? When can we see our first look, solid glimpse into the show 
beyond the teasers we've already got. And it seems we have somewhat of a possible confirmation date because Rafe Judkins, the showrunner himself, will be making an appearance at a panel in Comic-Con this year, July 23rd. And a lot of people are saying this is looking like it's gonna be when we get the trailer. It's gonna be 11 a.m. Pacific time. So if you're a Wheel of Time fan, be sure to tune on in and possibly be there to witness the release. I've kept it positive. I've kept it happy, but now I must speak on tragedy. Cursed over at Netflix has officially been canceled after its first season. I do not bring joy in saying this. I do not. I know I released a rant review, but I am always wanting adaptations, interpretations, or just shows in general to be done well, because then we all get entertainment. And it seems that the show was unable to overcome some of the problems that were prevalent in season one, and Netflix has decided not to carry it forth into a season two. Moment of silence for Cursed. Moving on. Don't worry though if you're bummed out by that because I have a fun little follow-up pick-me-up story that I think most people will enjoy because it seems that scientists have named a new spider after Sandman writer Neil Gaiman. That's right, our creepy crafter of stories, Neil Gaiman, has now his own arachnid bearing his name. The newly discovered trapdoor spider is going to be called Umide Nilgamenia. Nilgameni. Nilgameni. God, dyslexia is a bitch. But I'm still not feeling picked up enough. No Serduskis. So I'm gonna continue on into another piece of awesome self-published news. As it seems, a self-published fantasy sci-fi novel has rocketed to number one in Audible on release. Evan Winter tweeted out, ah! It looks like the rankings have updated again, but that doesn't matter because they actually did it. This morning, Iron Prince, a self-published sci-fi fantasy novel, was the number one best-selling audiobook in America. To the authors, Bryce and Luke, good job. That is an amazing feat and hats off to you. I am so excited to uh, see the self-publishing industry still getting just amazing accomplished like this left and right. And uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna make a huge deal out of this, but to the recent, let's call it what it was, Vanity Press pretending not to be a Vanity Press that tried to talk down to self-publishing as a whole and got called out for it. Uh, none of your books have ever debuted number one on Audible. In fact, none of them have debuted number one anywhere. It's almost like self-published authors are kicking your ass. Smidgen of Scheidenfreude news. Occasionally, you know, even celebrities we like who are of the mega rich, it, it's kind of just like, tee -hee. When you hear they missed out on something huge, because it's like, oh no, that, that was a missed opportunity. Well, it appears Matt Damon has come forth and admitted he was offered 10% of the profits of the Avatar movie to star in it, which he turned down. And if you know about how much money Avatar has made, what's 10% of 2.8 billion dollars? Matt Damon concluded this by saying, you will never meet an actor who turned down more money. Matt, I like you. You seem like a good guy. Ouch. <laughs> Let's keep it back to our little fantasy publishers over here and talk about the fact that Orbit has released the cover for The Bone Ships Wake. I like the cover and I love that title, The Bone Ships Wake. I'm here for it. Immediately puts images of creepy vessels, cresting waves, moving through epic voyages and adventures. Yes. And with a clever quote from Robin Hobb herself simply saying, remarkable. R.J. Barker has a book I'm hoping to get some success and has definitely blipped its way onto my beeping little radar. I hope I have brought you enough joy and glee throughout this fantasy news for me to give my honest thoughts on the final story. We got our first extended look into the upcoming Gollum Lord of the Rings game, and I wanted this to have some kind of angle or appeal. So I want to rant about this new Gollum game because who, uh, why? Who? I love Middle Earth, love the idea of doing any kind of game in there. But why a Gollum game where, as they're putting it in their promo video, you're doing like parkour stealth Gollum throughout Middle Earth. Who's watching the Middle Earth movies and saying, oh, you know what I want to do with Go Gollum? I want to do parkour through Middle Earth. 
I, it could be a good game. I'm open to that. But what the? Why is this? There's so many different Middle Earth games you can make. I'm not saying this is guaranteed to be bad. I'm not saying it's 100% going to be a flop or even critically hated. All I'm saying is why was this the best option for the next major Lord of the Rings game? I don't... Ah! It's just a case of what the hell? I can just think of a more interesting Lord of the Rings game concept off the top of my head. Farming simulator in the Shire. Be so down. Stardew Valley, but it's basically that changed over to the Lord of the Rings, which in my opinion is slightly more appealing than this like Middle Earth Mirror's Edge Gollum game. Stealth though, so I guess like add Tom Clancy, but you, you're Gollum, I'm so confused. I don't know, I'm just a little bit weirded out by it. But this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Join the Discord server and post any stories you'd like to see covered there. And uh, Love, love, love y'all. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Have a good one. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Twin Mom Reads to Escape. Dab. I, I ended this one with a, with a dab.